Well, welcome back to our Shorelines Conversations podcast. We're excited to come into this, the second half of this uh, conversation that I have with Kevin about sovereignty. It's it's our seventh episode, but it's kind of a 6.5. It's the second half. So uh, we're just excited for this to continue and uh, just join in the conversation. Well, and, that, and it does kind of bring to some other you know, topics that you talked about in your sermon with, you know, you, you talked about it's, it's really important uh, for us to recognize that, that salvation and God's plan are not based on, you know, our, our family heritage mm-hmm. or, or racial bloodlines, but it's, but it's based on faith. I mean, I, I, why, why is that? Why is that important to recognize? Cause I'm, you, yeah. you mentioned that you like, you know, people that have like, oh, I come from like a Jewish descent. And so it's different or yeah. I, I've never really had any conversations yeah. like that with anyone. So like, well, and also sometimes from Christian descent. I mean, yeah, well, I, mean fair, I, yeah. I think in, so in the first century, what the apostle Paul is addressing in Romans and that's, and so that's what's kind of uh, precipitating our conversation is, is, is growing out of Romans. So Paul is addressing a group of people who had mm-hmm. this sense that because of their Jewish heritage and their Jewish bloodlines, they were God's chosen people, not just chosen for a mission, but chosen for a blessing and mm-hmm. chosen for all time, um, that they had this, this unique place different than all other human beings. I don't believe that's what the scriptures teach. I think what they teach is that the Jewish people were called and blessed to be a blessing. They were called to be a missionary people. They were called to bring the message of the Messiah to the world. Uh, they, they were given a land um, whereby to do that, but also if you read through the Old Testament, God was really clear, if you don't follow my plan for you, and if, if you turn towards the ways of the nations before you, towards the pagan ways, if you begin to mm-hmm. worship idols, God says the land will spew you out. Yeah. I remember a person coming to me after a Sunday service, and they were a visitor, and they gave me a one-question litmus test, going back to this <laughs> idea, and they said, they, they came up to me, and, and with this kind of, you know when somebody asks you a question where there's in your face, and you know that your, your answer is just... If you agree with them, you're on their team. If you don't, they're going to be yeah, angry. Yeah. So this person, I don't know if they were just visiting and wanted to ask me if they were thinking about coming to the church, but this person came and said, I got to ask you a question. Do you believe that the land of Israel belongs to the to the people of Israel? That's a really specific question. It, it sure had is. had nothing to do with the sermon I was preaching. Yeah. <laughs> and so this was his... This it's, was his... Um, like he practiced it? Yeah. Well, this is his proverbial <laughs> be, it, be in his... He wasn't our yeah. bond, but this was his be in his bond. This was his, this was his thing. Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, I said, No. It never has been, and it never will be. And I knew that was not the answer he wanted. Yeah. And he looked at me like I had just said, "I I eat kittens as a delicacy." Yeah. You know, he looked at me. He looked at me like you're out of your mind. And I said, "I said the scripture's clear: the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All of the world and all things. We're going to get back to sovereignty. Yeah. God is sovereign over all things. Amen. Yeah. So I, I said, all the world is the Lord's, and and the land is the Lord's. Yeah. And he said, he says, you know what I mean. <laughs> and I said. I actually said, yes, I do know what you mean. Yeah. But I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna answer his question the way he wanted me to yeah. because I didn't agree with him. Yeah. And what, what, I think what he was saying is on a political <laughs> level, but I was saying I I, I wasn't gonna answer it on a, a, and I could have a different conversation on a political level. Yeah. I was answering on a biblical level. I'm a pastor. And I said, I said, you know, the scriptures were clear to the people of Israel, if they lived in the ways of the pagan nations before them that got that God drove out of the land, that God would drive them out of the land. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's God's land. And God's sovereign. He's on the throne. Amen. And when we forget that and we start to think, okay, you know, so, so going back to your initial question, um, is, a, a per, is a family heritage or is a bloodline that which saves you, that which makes you God's, God's person? The Apostle Paul is, is profoundly clear. Absolutely. Unapologetically yeah. clear. It is none of those things. It is faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah whether for Jew or for Gentile. And remember, in the yeah. ancient world, that was the whole human, human family. Yeah. It was either Jewish or Jewish and everyone else, the Gentiles. Yeah. And so the Apostle Paul is clear, uh, and Paul grew up as not only as a Jewish person, but as a trained rabbi and as a, you know, as a gifted multilingual debater of the Jewish faith who mm-hmm. became a follower of Jesus. But he understood that salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone. And now the problem with the idea that, well, we're this special group that God loves is now you get into the modern world and you have certain groups. And and and, and one of those is, and I've got some ex- experience being around those that are from the reformed mm-hmm. side of the theological spectrum. There are people from a very strong reformed perspective that would say, you know, we're part of a covenant community of people. Therefore, our children, there's even a term called the children of the covenant, where our children, because they're born to us, are somehow included in things because they were born to us. Right. So that same concept that I think that Paul was addressing back in the first century with Jewish people, right. you have some Christians saying, well, my kids are kind of in because I'm in 
heritage, bloodlines. I think the apostle would, Paul would say, but it's faith. Yeah. Now, most people I know that are reformed that would say that would say, absolutely, there's a point where my, my son or my daughter must put their faith in Jesus right. Christ. But there's sort of this, this sense of a special connection. Yeah. And ultimately, it, it's God's grace for all people in all places. And it's the work of Christ on the cross that can mm-hmm. save us. And if we, uh, and, and, and moving back to God's sovereignty, in God's sovereign goodness and grace, he entered human history. He paid the price. He conquered the power of sin and death and hell. He yeah. rose again. He offers his salvation to all people. And that's the point at which I believe God in his sovereignty then says, and I will allow people to choose me or to to refrain from making a choice or choosing against me. But that's up to them. Therefore, we don't stand before God and say, I had no power in this. You decided that before right. time what right. I would do. We stand bearing the responsibility for our own decisions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it sounds like uh, w- one of the, uh, your, your example, of the guy that came up to you at, at Shoreline, um, it's that, that reminds me of just the, the profound way that we can uh, take things out of context mm-hmm. and, and just let words be implications and not mm-hmm. definitions. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's interesting, but I, I, it makes me ask, you know, cause I think we see a lot of, uh, you know, Christians can take things out of context and, and can use things. Absolutely. That I think, and I think, yeah, Christians, people, you know, uh, but like, I, I, I just see that often where we, we try to force, you know, God's sovereignty or God's, God's will, uh, into a place where it's in line with our wills. And, mm-hmm. and so how does, where's the trouble in that? How do we prevent that in ourselves? Um, cause that's something that I, I constantly have to battle. Um, yeah. when I read yeah. the Bible and I say, oh, that aligns with this thing that I want to mm-hmm. do or that I, that I want to say or be a part of, or, uh, but this doesn't help me with that argument. Mm-hmm. So I kind of mm-hmm. avoid that. Yeah. So how do you yeah. prevent that in yourself? Yeah. The, the complex part is that, you know, we all read the Bible through a filter. Yeah. I, I wish that every one of us here, you could read it. Okay. I, I have the pure understanding of the Bible. We all, we all are struggling with filtering through our own experiences, right. our own predispositions, our own wants and likes and dreams. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, and that that's true across all of the human family. Yeah. And so I think this is why we, you know, I challenge people to go back to the word again and again and again, every day, every day, open the scriptures, every day, mm-hmm. let God speak to you and God will give you a deeper understanding of his word. I believe that I believe in the, the priesthood of all believers, that every Christian is made a priest and has access to God through Jesus Christ. And so, um, you know, I, I think that we've got to open the word and grapple with the word because, you know, the question you're asking, it's too easy to look and say, Okay, I look what God is saying, I look what God is teaching in his word, and it doesn't fit how I live my life. Mm-hmm. It doesn't fit what I, or, or, or how I want the world to be. Yeah. And so sort of in my own authority, not not bowing my knee to the sovereign God and not at, you know not, not not putting myself under his teaching, but basically saying I will change and manipulate or add to God's word to make it accommodate my wants, my likes, my lifestyle. Right. Uh, my frailties, my sins. Uh, <laughs> most people who are Christians won't say that that's what they're doing. Right. Um, and sometimes we don't even know that's what we're doing. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, the Bible talks about you know, the, the heart of human beings is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Yeah. And there's times I can't even stand in my own heart, understand yeah. my own heart. There's times, uh, all, all three of us in the studio today, we're all married. And so there's times where, you know, as where I'll have a certain view of the world and certain things and, I, and I'll be behaving a certain way. And my wife will point something out to me and I'll look and I'll go, wow, that's, wrong that's ugly that's not good i shouldn't be that way i didn't even recognize that i was oh. that way and i don't know if we use the if we use these two terms in uh in our earlier podcast i think we may have but uh the term exegesis and eisegesis yeah. Yeah. and uh you know exegesis is is letting letting the truth come out of the to exit exit mm-hmm. to exit the text we get exhale and exit from that word exegesis is letting letting the meaning and the truth come out of the text eisegesis is to push into Internal. it what we wanted yeah. to say yeah uh, and so if we look and say god is sovereign his word is true we yield ourselves to him even when it doesn't make sense to us yeah. that's the hardest times yeah. you go this doesn't make sense to me I, you know i can say when i or was I don't a, like it yeah I, I don't like it you know when sherry and i were engaged uh when sherry and i were engaged we uh i'll, I'll, I'll be delicate we found each other attractive yeah <laughs> and we wanted to enjoy our tra- enjoy our attractiveness yeah Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna say it like that. I, I get it. Um, this is P, PG 13. We're not gonna go beyond that. But uh, and and so we find each other attractive, and yet God's word, we absolutely were 
convicted that God's word was clear, yeah. that fully realizing that attractiveness by physical intimacy was not God's design for us. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted it to be God's design. Yeah. I would have preferred that it would be God's design. Would have been easier. Um, I tried to, in my mind, figure out if there's some way I could justify it being God's design. I couldn't. Yeah. It's likely we'll get um, married. <laughs> it's, it's, and, and so, and so we, so at that point, both Sherry and I said, we want to walk in God's design and mm -hmm. ways, even though we don't fully understand it, even though it doesn't tell you, know, we, you know, we know we're going to get married. What's you go through? Well, what's a piece of paper? What's a ceremony? Yeah. God knows we're married in our hearts. We did all, <laughs> you know, I mean, no, we, we went through all of yeah, our own just, yeah. we, we just went through ours and, um, and she, and I always say she's a very forceful woman. She's a strong woman. <laughs> that's uh, very but, Sherry. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. very Sherry. But, but for both of us, we, we had to let the truth of the text come out mm -hmm. and inform our lives. Yeah. And so there were times I just would say to her, I got I to gotta leave. I got to get out of here. I'm, we, I got to run. Yeah. Uh, literally, run away. Uh, and you go, <laughs> As well, you're that. running. And, and in our culture, we don't do a lot of that anymore. We, we kind of yeah. like, well, if it feels natural, if I want to do it, if it's what my desire is, then certainly I should do it. Mm -hmm. And I even hear people say things like, I, I, think, I think God would want me to do what I desire to do. And I, when I hear that, I'm like, no, yeah. really, for the most part, no. Yeah. Um, most of our desires are not, uh, you know, I shouldn't say, many of our desires, yeah. our initial desires, our knee-jerk responses, or our passions um, would lead us to do things that would throw us in jail, lead us yeah. to do things that would dishonor God, that would hurt the people around us. It's actually looking to the power of the Spirit and saying, I need to actually have the control of the Spirit over my life to not act on certain things. And so... Uh, and, and so I just look and, and say, am I going to ultimately say God is sovereign and in his sovereignty, we talked earlier about how sovereignty is the hub around everything that everything kind of, kind of coalesces around. Mm -hmm. If God is truly sovereign, if his word is true, and if God's plan for our lives is the best plan possible, maybe not best for me at that moment, but best for God's glory and yep. best for the world overall, then will I yield to his sovereign leading and plan, right. or do I make myself the sovereign, yeah. the Lord, the one in charge? Yeah. And I think for most of us, in any given day, there's times we're tempted to say, I'd like to run this on my track. I'd like to run it my way. Yeah. And I think when you have a deep sense of the sovereignty of God, the God who knows what's going on, who sees all that's happening, who is all powerful, who is with us at all times, um, that shouldn't create terror and fear. That should create a comfort and a strength to say, God, I want to live within your will and follow your ways even when it doesn't align with how I see the world right. and how I want things to be. Yeah. So is that, is that what happens when, when your will becomes like when God's will becomes ours, when, uh, when we receive that and we say, okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to walk in that line. Mm -hmm. Is, is that kind of yeah. the profound you yeah. know, thing yeah. that happens? Yeah. And it's a journey. I mean, yeah. you know, God's will, God, God's will becoming my will, which is really what, what it means to be a Christian. That's the journey of sanctification, yeah, sanctification right? It's yeah. becoming more and more like Jesus. Yeah. And I think that, that, that every time we take a step deeper into God's will with greater obedience to his sovereign wisdom and his sovereign leading and his hand upon our lives, every time we partner with God instead mm -hmm. of push back against him, I think that there's greater joy, greater peace, greater hope, a greater intimacy with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy. Well, you get you, you know, inherently, right? You, you would get more pushback from the enemy. Yeah. As soon as you start living in 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 the line with the Lord's will. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the closer you walk with Jesus, the more you, you you're in a battlefield where the enemy absolutely. is wanting to mess. Yeah. With. Absolutely. Yeah. And if we're dancing on the edges of sin constantly or diving headfirst into it, the enemy's uh, is not fighting against us. The enemy's just kind of luring us along. Yeah. And so no, I think I think that's a great point, Cole. And yeah. so, um, and so for you know, so for for me as a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, for me as a husband, as a dad, as a pastor. Um, I want to just continually look and say, how do I yield myself to what God's will is? How do I, I, I look at the scriptures. I let them speak to me. Um, but I want to circle back to one more thing. Being in God's will, uh, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, the safest place to be is in God's will or that, you know, the, the easiest place to be is, mm -hmm. is in God's will. Well, God's will is not always the safest place. It's not always the easiest place. The apostle Paul, who wrote the book of Romans, was strapped up five times and given the 40 lashes less one. Yeah. He had 195 scars in his body because he followed Jesus. Being in God's will, know, knowing that God is sovereign, he rules the universe, surrendering to his will and following his ways isn't always easy, but it is always right. Yeah. And it always ultimately leads to the best life possible, even if the Apostle Paul would say, he at one point he says, you know, I, I, kinda, I wear these scars as a mark of my ministry. Of my, mm -hmm. you, know, you don't take those scars off, not, yeah. not for a lifetime. Um, and so, uh, 
uh, yeah, so, so to me, um, following in God's will and being in his ways and saying that I will yield to what he is calling me to do and I surrender to his sovereign plan is always right, is always good, but it's oftentimes very hard and very challenging. Yeah. And the opposite is true also, and that is if I try to say I'm the sovereign and I'm going to try to make everything that God's word says shape what I want, mm-hmm. um, we, we run radically quickly away from any view of the authority of Scripture or any really any reason for trying to pretend we're living as a Christian, I think, if we're saying, you know, uh, I'm going to just decide what's right for me and in my world what I like best, and I'm going to just take God's word and God's, and I'm going to I'm going to basically say I'm the sovereign of the universe, and God, you have to accommodate me. Yeah. And the thinking that God always wants me happy, God will certainly want me to fulfill all my desires and dreams in this life. Mm-hmm. It's like no, yeah, really not. Now, there may be places where God's design and, and dreams li- align with yours, but I found for the most part, uh, following Jesus is exactly what Jesus said. It's denying ourselves, taking up our cross, and following him every day. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can see how that can cause people to, you know, as they're they're seeking to live in God's will and to, to walk in line with his will, and then you have, like, the enemy coming at you in opposition. Mm-hmm. I can see how people can mistake that for for God putting, hmm. uh, roadblocks in, in your, yeah. in your, your path. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, I, I just thinking on like difficult things in life, like, you know, how do good things happen to bad people? And, uh, there's, there's wonderful books out there for that. And, and, uh, uh, just reading through that, I can see how people can really feel like, like that's the Lord putting those issues in their life or, or, and, yeah, I I'm seeing now in my life just looking back, back just where where I uh maybe had that angry like shaking my fist mm-hmm. at the Lord, you know. Yeah. Uh but really it's it's when I was see I was making decisions like oh, I'm going to I'm going to seek ministry mm-hmm. in, instead of other things I was doing. Uh and then roadblock after roadblock of mm-hmm. not not getting a response from this community or not getting a response from this church and and coming to shoreline was i think the the way that i was putting those things on the lord that he was saying like you're not supposed to be in ministry you're not mm-hmm. supposed to do this yeah. and and uh yeah it's it's interesting there's a dichotomy there of like i want to walk in the lord's will the enemy's coming against me but maybe he's also like closing doors so that you can yeah. receive the open one. Yeah. It's it's hard to it's hard to navigate all this. Yeah. It's the, the the same presenting challenges uh what I hear you saying is you, the same presenting challenge. So you're looking saying I feel leading towards ministry, I'm pushing towards that and a bunch of doors are getting slammed in my face. Yeah. Is that God closing the doors because he doesn't want me to go there or is it the enemy closing the door because God wants to do a good work through me? Yeah. And and from where, where we stand it's hard to know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I think that's a, that's a, a great kind of a personal picture. Yeah. Of, I think a lot of people listening will say, yeah. yeah, I have those times too, where really hard things, you know, the, 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 these, these roadblocks start to pop up and these things get in the way. And, and when those things happen, I was like, there's, there's three options. It's either God doing it, it's the enemy doing it, or it's me yeah. putting those things there. And so then, then you pray, then you discern. I'm thankful that you got the message and you kept pressing <laughs> forward because yeah. uh, you're, you're a, continue to grow uh, I think as a, as a man of God and as a worship leader and it's great to, to watch you thank you um, continue to, to lead people into God's presence and and so so now you look back and you go okay if those are genuine roadblocks that are being thrown up I look back now and go okay that was the enemy trying to discourage me and so then I think what you do is you learn from okay I got to figure out how was it that the enemy was working so I think with time we learn like anything in life mm-hmm. how to discern is this from the Lord trying to slow me down or is this from the enemy trying to keep me from going where I'm Right, I'm supposed to go, or is this me? Because I'm afraid. Yeah, and and so that's why you know slowing down. That's why prayer is critical. And I think, and I think also because God's on the throne, and because God's sovereign. What I do is I keep. If I feel like this could be of the Lord, I keep pushing into it. Yeah, I keep pushing into it. And I, I go, God, if you don't want me in the, on this path, slam the door. Yeah. I don't. I don't often just sit and go. Okay, I'm just going to do nothing yeah. until yeah. God drags me into it. Yeah. I remember a guy Open when, it I, when in front I was. Of me. Was that? Open it in front of Exa- me. The exactly. Door. Yeah. Well, I, I knew a guy when I was a volunteer at Garden Grove Community Church back as a young Christian uh, down in Garden Grove, uh, California here. And 
great guy, loved the Lord, but he was really big on, he was really big on waiting on the Lord mm-hmm. and just waiting on the Lord. So I remember we were good friends. We actually volunteered together working with, uh, working with high school students uh, in, in the kind of Southern California coastal area there. And, and so I went away to college and, uh, and then I went to seminary and then I got married and had a first kid and like 10 years had gone by and he was still uh, at the same church kind of doing the same thing. And so I was, I was down in Orange County and I, I gave him a call and I said, I said hey, can we get together? And he goes, oh mm-hmm. yeah, come on by. And so we sat down and I said, and I said to him, I said, yeah, I said, nah, did you, I know you were thinking about um, doing some education and training. And he was kind of in the same role because he, he, he goes, well, yeah, he said, I'm still waiting on the Lord. Um, to give me some clear leading on that. Well, it's been 10 years, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, he's, and so I said, well, now what about this? He says, well, I'm really waiting on the Lord. And after a couple of waiting on the Lord's, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of going, okay, I think, um, I don't know if you're waiting on the Lord. Yeah. I think you're just actually looking for excuses to not do anything. Yeah. And, and, it se- and it seemed like he took this, this path of least resistance. And so I actually said to him, I said, what if while you were waiting on the Lord, you took some classes? Yeah. What if while you were waiting on the Lord, you took this next step forward? And if God doesn't want you there, he can close the door, but keep moving. Keep yeah. So so part of my thing is I don't just do, do things you know randomly. I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm kind of about being strategic. Yeah. You work kind with of. me and you know, I'm, I'm big on kind being of. strategic thinking. Things through, but you, okay, what's the next thing that seems like it's God's will? Seems like it would honor him. And I'm going to go after that with a passion. Yeah, and if God doesn't yeah. want me there, he'll slam the door shut. I don't want to be 10 years down the road having moved nowhere because I'm waiting for the Lord to drag me there. Yeah. Maybe he was waiting on the Lord to use you <laughs> to tell him that, kick him in the butt. <laughs> I have various theories that will be, that will be, as I've said before, saved for another yeah, podcast. Saved. So, saved. Uh, hey, well, so kind of thinking, you know, a little bit back to that, that, the problem of pain and, and suffering. I, I think, you know, you, you ended your sermon uh, with the doxology and that's mm-hmm. in Romans 11. And, and you, you see just that doxology is kind of, um, it, it references God's reply to, to the book of Job and, and you see it in Isaiah as well. But th- that section of Job, when you, it's, it's a, it's a gut punch, you know, yeah. it's, it hits you good. And it's, yeah. it's hard to, to, it's hard to look at and yeah. it's hard to listen to. And it's hard to read. Um, I just, uh, yeah, when you're, when you're reading through that, I think it can be difficult for people who are going through really, uh, painful, brutal struggles, um, to imagine, uh, and not just even their struggles, but because they experience struggles, they know that other people have these, the same huge pains in their life. Um, I'm kind of wondering how the, the response from the doxology and, and what you see in Job and Isaiah, mm-hmm. how can people look to those uh, to kind of help them through those processes? Yeah. You know, when you, when you have this idea of, of God's big sovereign plan yeah. and the yeah. pain being involved in that. Well, and so, so that kind of the bow on the kind of the end of this part of the text where the doxology is lifted up and within the doxology, there's, you know, questions like, you know, who's, who's, been a counselor to God, who's loaned to God right. in a way that God now owes them. Yeah, um, and it's, it's it's clearly nobody. No, it, you know, so 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 the the sovereignty of God just just kind of screams through that those closing mm-hmm. words. You look at Job, and Job's story is you know it's profound suffering, profound loss, right. um, epic epic loss. Yeah, and so finally, when it's gone through a cycle of Job's friends each kind of giving their speeches and trying to give right, Job perspective, right, yeah. and then you find this guy Eli who's been sit- apparently sitting there with him the whole time but hasn't said anything, and he pops in at the near the end. He starts to kind of give his contribution to the conversation, uh, and 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 each of them is 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 has some helpful things to say, but also is off on some things and mm-hmm. that, and that gets kind of corrected and challenged. Yeah. Uh, but you get to the end and finally, you know, Job has, has kind of cried out to God and asked his questions and, and kind of pled his case to God. And then God doesn't come in and go, yeah, Job, I messed up here. Yeah. Uh, God says, who is this? Who is this that comes into my presence? And, and, and he just, and, and, and doesn't just kind of ask it in a verse or two. Yeah for chapters yeah god says let me let me tell you no he says you've argued your case now let me tell you who i am yeah let me break it down yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 he goes through the great sea creatures and he goes through the creation and he, yeah. goes, he says, and he just says let me remind you who i am and it's like he's saying i am sovereign i am on the throne mm-hmm. and now we can look at that and go that's this just feels really heartless yeah. i mean job has just gone through um unthinkable unthinkable loss and pain um mm-hmm. 
for most human beings that have walked this earth, uh, could not imagine, you know, what it, what it would be like to go through all the, the, the loss, losing losing the people he loves the most, lo- and and then even his wife who hasn't died, who is now sort of turned against him emotionally, you know, losing losing the material things, losing his authority, losing the respect of his friends, it just mm-hmm. goes on and on and on and on, and um, and and yet, God's response to Job is. And here's the thing. I don't think when God address, when addresses us and calls us to look at his sovereignty, I don't think what he's saying is your pain doesn't matter. Yeah. Your sorrow is is inconsequential. Yeah. I don't think he's I don't think that God is saying this isn't real. God is saying, look at me. Yeah. The only thing, Job, that will get you through this is if your eyes are on me. Mm-hmm. God is not being insensitive to Job's needs. God is being profoundly aware of his needs, and he's saying, "Job, your need is me." Yeah, it's almost parental. Yeah, yeah. it is. It yeah. is. It's 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 the it's the, lo- the loving yeah. parent yeah. who says, um, "This this is how it is." So God says, "Job, your eyes are fixed on your loss." Yeah, and that's going to destroy you. But if your eyes are fixed on me, if you see who I am, mm-hmm. then. Everything will be in perspective, and then and after God goes through kind of His part, and and really Job is a series of speeches, and God so God kind of presents His case, gives His speech, yeah, and Job says, "It's time for me to shut my mouth." Yeah, he said it, there's a there's a sense of, I get it, I see. Um, that's not a heartlessness on God's part. No. When when God uh, in you. Know, Throughout different places in the scripture where God says, understand that I am God, I am the Lord, I am the sovereign. And, and the book of Job is, yes, it's a book about suffering, but ultimately it's a book about sovereignty. Yeah, It's about the fact that God says, I am on the throne, and Job, even when things don't make any sense to you, mm. will you still trust me? Will you still follow me? Because at the beginning of Job, Job is just is saying, listen, I'm not going to argue against, against God, but it ultimately comes out and shares his heart, shares yeah. his struggles. His friends give poor advice. He, he responds back to them. But at the end of the day, God speaks. And I think that that's a great uh, picture for our lives, is to say in the deepest pain and the hardest loss, in the times where it feels like the universe is out of control, and if God is on the throne, and if God is sovereign, how can God let this happen? And we want to be, you know, and and we can we can question God, we can shake our fist at God. Um, God has big shoulders. God made us. He understands that. Yeah. God doesn't. Um, you know, the, the the lament psalms from the book of Psalms yeah, are people yeah. saying, "God, I'm hurting. I'm struggling. Where are you? I feel like I'm in quicksand. I'm up to my neck. My enemies are all around me." And yet, also in those psalms, yet I will trust you. Yet I yeah. will love you. Yet I will follow you. And so for Job, uh, and I think I think for anyone looking at the book of Romans who understands the sovereignty of God at a high level, we say, "God, I don't understand fully." how you work. I don't understand how the universe works. Um, I, I, but, but I understand that you're on the throne, that you are sovereign, you know all things, you see all things, you have power to do all things. Mm-hmm. And so I cast myself on your mercy and I trust you yeah. as best I can. And when I start to wander, I reorient myself and get back to trusting you again. Right. And I think our God's sovereignty is a gift in that it causes us to say, I don't have to run the universe. Yeah. I don't have to be in charge of everything. I have to be responsible with the things God calls me to and do the best I can. But God's on the throne, not me. Yeah. And then that that should bring us to a place of incredible trust and peace if we know who that God is and we know that his intentions are good and his love for us is real. Yeah, I, man, it, it makes me... Uh... I'm going to challenge myself to to kind of go back to Job and, and mm-hmm. read through that with that lens because I don't normally. Like mm-hmm. in the, the amount of times I've read Job... Um, uh, never really looked at it in the way, in the way of sovereignty. You know, I, I, I just, I think you, it's an interesting way to, yeah, kind of pull all that together. I, I would challenge I'll, I'll people. I'll tell you, Cole, as you do that, and when God's voice comes in, um, and if, and I'd encourage you to even consider reading it out loud because when yeah. you do it, when you, when you read the different speeches, you can come up with even, even come up with a different voice for each of his friends. If yeah. You, want to. you have some uh, fun with it. But when you, I'm but, quite the thespian, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, as, as we've said in many occasions, yeah. um, but, but with, when you get to God's voice, um, don't hear it as this God who is just saying, how dare you question yeah. me? What God is saying is, this is who I am. Yeah. Job, you have to see me. Yeah. You have to see me as I am. And and you have to see your who are you that 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 kind of comes bursting into my presence with yeah. you know who who that brings these things. Let me tell you who I am. And when you and I think what he's saying is, Job, if you can see who I am, then even though everything else doesn't make sense, mm-hmm. it's gonna be okay because yeah. you see me. 
And if we keep God limited or we put our sense of our own power and authority over God, we never get that vision of yeah. God's sovereignty. Yeah, man, I, I would challenge people to to go back and, and revisit the book of Job yeah. with that that mindset because it's, yeah. man, we, we need mm-hmm. that today. And particularly um, the chapters where God is speaking. Yeah, yeah. And, and then there's a little wrap up at the end yeah. where things kind of get resolved. But, but I think that would be... Uh, it's powerful. Yeah, it's yeah. powerful. I, I I would imagine that that would bring uh, a new perspective for the situations that mm-hmm. we're all in right now. Mm-hmm. I think I think while while yes, there are people moving forward. There's mm-hmm. right now in, in what's going on uh, in the world. I think people are moving forward with COVID. I think people, a lot of people, are going back to work. I think um, you know there there there's momentum. Mm-hmm. But I also think there's still people sitting in in massive loss. There's still mm-hmm. people sitting in in confusion and it's it's bringing up these existential mm-hmm. uh inherently existential problems in, in people's minds and in in their families and uh, man I, I think that would be a really great thing to look back mm-hmm. at at the book of job and and to just get that fresh perspective of looking at the sovereignty of god and and his position over everything and mm-hmm. I, I love those you know yeah it's uh, it's a powerful book well Man, there's a lot that we could continue to talk about. There's, there's, I don't know how many times you said that's a whole nother pod, yeah. podcast in this episode, but and a couple it, of times I was joking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can probably figure it or, out or, 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 defer, or deferring. Yeah. 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 But I, I, you know, I know there's a lot of things we can talk about and I, I but I think this is something for people to chew on. I think mm-hmm. this is something for, you know, people have some potential homework to do and think about, think yeah. about and, and do some research on this has been, man, I, I'm so grateful to be in this seat. I'm so grateful to to be in a position where I can, uh, we can, you know, discuss these and and it, it's reminding me to tell people you got to have we, these conversations don't have yeah. to be had with microphones yeah. in front of your yeah, face. Exactly. It, it's it. This is so uh, life giving mm-hmm. to to be able to like express this stuff and mm-hmm. and to to you know, learn to hear people and to understand their positions and not, not give labels and not mm-hmm. fall into, into, you know, pigeonholes. And uh, yeah. it's, this has been, yeah, life giving for me. So thank yeah. you. Um, and I, I'm just looking forward to, to more of these conversations and, and we'll see where the Lord takes us. I'm, I, I've been enjoying this. So thank you, Kevin. My and joy. We'll do this again. Great. Whether you're watching this podcast on the YouTube channel or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear our weekly episodes. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week with another one.